Okay, today I'm in London with Peter Phillips, the Chairman and CEO of City Racing. Uh, thanks for agreeing to talk to us today, Peter. Welcome. Um, where did the idea from City Racing come from? Was there a eureka moment? Uh, no, not really. It was, um, it was probably way back in 2014. Um, Andrews Bowen, who were the uh, footing um, suppliers, uh, were, um, did this, the footing for a Global Champions Tour event that we did on Horsecast Parade in London. And they um, and this it went in and came out so quickly that we we started to talk about other other opportunities and they'd been working on um, a um, working on something in racing wanting to try and get it into the city so I said well you know I'd love to be involved and it really went from there and we started the process of trying to um, look at how best we were going to do it how we were going to make it make it a reality. Um, and yeah, so it's sort of been a, a bit of a bit of a journey on and off um, uh, for about nearly four years now. So, was the ultimate aim from your personal point of view? Was it to sort of increase the popularity of racing or push it forward, or was it just a, a different avenue for the sport? Uh, I think first and foremost, it was a business opportunity. Um, it was a unique opportunity to be able to um, provide another a great sporting. Um, series, um, but using horse racing and and taking horse doing something that hasn't been done before, taking horse racing out of the tracks and putting them, putting it into the city centres, making them more accessible. So I think first and foremost, this is a commercial. This is a commercial venture. The second part of this, and and one of the reasons why we wanted to get the jockey club here in the UK um, involved, is because we wanted this to be a platform for racing to be able to promote itself. Wherever we went around the world, we were having similar conversations with uh, racing governing bodies about you know, the engagement with the younger audiences um, and, um, and gambling revenues and so on and so forth. Um, and, and so we wanted to be able to, you know, these events will ultimately be a fantastic platform for the industry in each of the countries that we go to, to reach out to a new audience and be able to um, push messages across to, um, to, to that audience. Okay, so what sort of format did you have in mind? How many races? What sort of... Um, so, so the idea is that we're going to do um, six races, uh, five furlongs um, under rules, uh, eight horses a race. Uh, we will... Um, the whole purpose of running under rules is that, so that we can obviously have betting, um, betting involved. Uh, if we didn't run five furlongs, we, run the, we ran the risk of this being a gimmick. Uh, and if it's a gimmick, it becomes unsustainable. So the whole the, we wanted to make it as, as authentic a race meeting as possible in the city centres, um, and that's really that's really the, the the basis of where we started from. And what sort of class horses would you be looking at? Uh, realistically, we're looking at zero to ninety rated. Um, uh, the, the focus is very much going to be on the jockeys. So this is this is almost going to be a jockeys championship rather than um, rather than about the horses. Again, as part of engaging with a new audience, it's a lot easier for people to engage with people rather than with, with horses. Uh, I've been involved in horses all my life, and if you put the top 10 racehorses in the world down Oxford Street in London, I wouldn't be able to tell you which one's which. But so, so really, it's about, it's about trying to get a, a new audience engaged with, uh, with the personalities that are involved with jockey, uh, with uh, with the sport, and you know, and that will include the um, the owners and the trainers as well. Um, you know, we want people to be able to, um, you yeah, know, their personalities to shine through, if you like. So, in an ideal world, what would the um, how many cities would you have on the circuit in a year? Ah, oh, listen, I, I think realistically, um, we we have a long term plan. We have a plan for um, sort of five and ten years, and I think certainly within five years, we would like to be able to have sort of five or six races um, in a calendar year. Uh, we've also got to bear in mind that we, um, we don't, we're not competition to the tracks, um, therefore we have to fit in around the, um, uh, around the existing racing calendar. Uh, obviously we want access to the top jockey, so therefore we've got to be sensitive in terms of where they're going to be um, geographically based to be able to um, come to our, um, participate in our events. So, so there's a number of different factors involved, but I think if we got to that sort of number uh, within five years, I think we'd be quite happy. Okay, so you said it would uh, revolve around the jockeys. Now, would it be, would it be just racing, or would you look at it being a whole day of stuff going on, you know, to attract people? I, I, I think if it's, given the fact that we are in the city centres, you have a nat natural catchment areas, and I think you need to be able to put something else on. 
Uh, and we'll be working with our you know, local partners in each of the cities that we go to to be able to do that and make sure that we get the right entertainment. Um, um, and ultimately, we want to create a fun day out. And if we can create a fun day out for people who may not have been racing or had any ex exposure to racing, they might decide to go to their lo local racetrack afterwards. So would you envisage it being an enclosed ticketed event? Uh, I think it will vary on, from city to city. I think most cities, um, certainly that we've spoken to um, at present, will probably make it a predominantly free event. There will be ticketed ticketed areas for sure, so there will be hospitality areas, there will be grandstand areas and so on and so forth. But I think there will be a free elements to it. Um, but that ultimately is, is something we have to work out with the local promoters when, we, uh, when we're on the ground. Right, so have you got a target audience and demographic in mind that you would be... Uh, I, think, I think ultimately we need, we need to be fairly broad brush about this. You know, we want the whole... During this whole process, we've always said we need to work with the industry. We need to bring the industry with us on this journey. So for us, there's a big education element to make sure that everyone within the industry understands what we're doing, understands that ultimately we're providing a safe surface, the equine welfare is, um, has to be the top of our priority list. Um, and, but we're also going to provide an entertaining day out. It's not a gimmick. This is a genuine race meeting. Um, and I think by the, the mere fact by holding it in, the, in a city centre, we're doing something new, we're doing something exciting, we're going to attract new people to it. So I think we want to be able to bring the racing industry with us, they're a crucial part of it, but we also want to be able to attract a new audience, whether they be young or old, it doesn't really matter. So long as we have people who come along and have a fun day out, then hopefully they will then um, take more of an interest in racing moving forward. Okay, so, so any fears of it being sort of aimed at high end audience only uh, unfounded? Uh, yeah, completely. Yeah, no, this is, there, of course there will be high end elements to it, but ultimately we will be, um, you know, as I say, you know, we, we want as many people to be able to come to these events as possible um, from all sorts of backgrounds. Okay, so um, the, the main purpose of the meeting obviously is to promote racing and it's something that you want to do, you know, as a, a, um, a new sort of thing, but would broadcasting and sort of betting and be a big part of the business element? Uh, absolutely. I mean, essentially this, this has the, the, the ability to be a new media platform as well. Um, so we have, um, I, I guess the closest thing that we um, that is in current existence would be maybe, um, an, although we're, we're, we're a long way from that, is, is what we're trying to create is that Formula One, Formula E type series. Um, so uh, we're trying to create a buzz about the sport in each and every, way, every um, region we go to, every city we go to. But we're also, off the back of that, we, you know, we are, we're actually, in terms of the disruption we cause to, to the cities, it will cause a lot less disruption than, than motorsport would do. So from that perspective, I hope that, um, that cities will look at it and say, well, actually, this is, a, this is a fantastic event to be able to bring into the city. From the betting perspective, I think there's a, um, we certainly want betting involved in it. Um, I see, I see uh, we would certainly look for betting partners to be involved. Some cities that we go to won't necessarily allow, allow betting. Um, for instance, in the UK, we're allowed, we'll be allowed to gamble on the races, but we won't necessarily be able to allow to have on the rails um, bookies. Right. So we'll have to look at slightly different ways of doing that. Maybe it'd be you know, through apps and so on and so forth. So new technology. So there are ways around it, but ultimately, yes, of course, to make it an authentic experience, we need the bookmakers involved in it. Yeah, so you've mentioned that it's, it's a business venture first and foremost. What would be the main source of profit for City Racing for hosting these events? Well, ultimately, it's got to be a success, not just for City Racing, but also for the local promotion and the local city. So it has to be a, a success ticked on, on a number of different levels. But success for us is ultimately being able to produce a sustainable series, um, a sustainable, sustainable global series, which we can build on year and year and year. Um, and you know, whether that's a case of getting you know, the events getting bigger and bigger each year, or whether it be um, you know, whether we 
getting better horses or whatever it happens to be. It, we will look to build and work with the industry to build these events as we go through the course of the, um, course of the evolution of this event. So would you envisage it being, you mentioned betting before, being a, hopefully as it's a world, going to be a World Series, would it be worldwide betting? So in a casino in Australia, they might be betting on... Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I think, um, I think these days horse racing is a, is a global sport. Um, and so therefore, what we have to offer has to be um, uh, globally significant. And we hope with the spread of the cities that we're talking to around the world at the moment, we'll be able to touch uh, most of the key racing markets and, and, and get people engaged through that way. I'm just talking about, the, wondering about logistics, given the tons of material and the skilled workforce, etc., to uh, sort of put the tracks down and get them back up again without too much disruption. Would you envisage sort of kit sort of stored in each country ready to go, or would you need to transport it all around the world? Uh, I think it's... Um, uh, it will, again, it will depend on location to location. Um, sometimes it will be easier to uh, manufacture the surface on site um, or in country. Um, other times it, will, it may be easier to put it in containers and ship it. Uh, it, it we, ultimately, we will be looking at the most cost effective um, way of doing it. However, if we, you know, once the surface is there, yes, the likelihood is we will store it in um, in location and, and hopefully use it for um, following years. Yeah, I suppose once you're established, then you start looking at things. Yeah. Now then, have you looked at other sort of avenues? For example, it might be quite attractive for some people to do the tour, follow it around the world. Would you be looking at sort of getting involved with the putting on travel packages and things like that for people that wanted to? Uh... <laughs> you, um, the short answer to that is, um, I hope we get to the stage that that is uh, that the series is successful enough to be able to uh, to warrant that. But I think initially we need to we need to focus on uh, on delivering a, a world class event. Okay, and obviously horse racing itself is under a lot of pressure from quite rightly for people um, worried about animal welfare, etc. How would you know in a built if we, for example, this street, if you had a horse racing in a built up area, how could you ensure that some sort of nightmare scenario didn't you know with an injured or loose horse running around i mean how difficult was it going to be to actually guarantee safety for horses uh well i guess the first thing i say is that because we're dealing with horses nothing is ever guaranteed that's the first and foremost however we have put together a um, veterinary advisory panel who are putting together a framework of of um, a gold standard framework for our um uh, equine welfare um, and they, that, will, um, that is in process as we speak and will be um, hopefully ready by the end of, um, by the end of February. Uh, and that will then um, dictate a lot of the processes that we will put in place around our uh, equine welfare. So, um, of course, it's always, you know, the health and safety of the crowds, the health and safety of the jockeys, the equine welfare is always a key element of what we're looking at. Um, and we will we will put processes in place to make sure that we um, we do as much as we can to mitigate any of those situations. Okay, I understand as well that you've decided that jockeys won't be allowed to use whips, which I'm sure will please a lot of people and uh, worry a lot of others. Is that because of your own personal opinion on the use of the whip, or for any other reason? Uh, I'm not entirely sure we have said that. Um, however, um, I I think we have to take a rational view on this and and look at the whip as a as an element of control rather than encouragement and i think given the environment that we're in it would be um uh, it would be foolhardy for us certainly at the uh, at, at the outset to uh, to ban whips completely i think whips are um, uh, are needed on a on a control element and given the environment I think that's it's probably a sensible way forward um, how we how we actually implement any of the rules um, around the whip moving forward that's something that we're still we're still in conversation with and do you think that um, once established city racing can sort of diversify to diversify to anyway you know public parks the desert the outback airports that sort of thing is that across your mind uh, to be honest, no. Um, I think realistically, it, it, the, the product is what the product is, which is, you know, we have, there are some amazing global cities, you know, they have some fantastic um, backdrops of which we can run, run horse racing against. Um, I think if you lose the, um, uh, certainly public parks could be, could be an option, but they have to be city centred public parks. 
um, you have to be you just have to be able to do these things in city centres. I don't think you can uh, otherwise you lose the purpose of, of the reason why we're doing it. We're trying to take horse racing to a, a new audience and if you stick it in the middle of the desert then you're sort of defeating the purpose of the exercise. Yeah. So are we as close as, can you see on the horizon a date for the first race meeting or even a year for the date for the first race meeting? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm hoping that um, come the spring we'll be able to announce the first, uh, certainly the first meeting, if not um, the first few meetings. Um, we're, we're in good conversations with a number of cities about, um, uh, about dates and, um, you know, we're those conversations are developing and we hope that uh, that they will progress at a pace to, to allow us to make uh, make an announcement in the spring. Okay, and one thing that people will notice is you don't trumpet your royal credentials with this business. Um, is that because you want to be seen to doing it as a businessman in your own right and not the Queen's grandson? Uh, yeah, well, most definitely, yes. Um, the I think primarily though this is it's this is about the idea this is about the concept um, you know I've uh, th this is something that has been developed and I, I'm fortunate enough that I've been involved with to be able to develop and um, um, have, have a large say in the direction that it's going um, and that's that's the primary primary reason for me being involved this is ultimately a business business decision okay where would you well you may even have an idea where, where would you like to see the first one take place um, listen, I think I think there are a number of global cities which would be perfect for this. Um, I, and I think you could probably reel off a number of number of cities, and we'd all say, yeah, absolutely, we'd love to do the first race there. Uh, we'd love to. They, I think, all the cities that you would possibly mention, we would always love to um, uh, like to be able to go to. So long as we have um, the width available to us and the and the length available to us to allow us to put the track in place. Then you know we can we can pretty much go to any city, um, any city in the world. Um, I think what we what you will find is that this will be a truly global series. We will look at Australasia, Asia, um, Middle East, Europe, and North America um, as our as our key markets, and those those will be where hopefully the um, the the majority of the races will will come from. Okay, so finally, where would you like to see city racing at in a decade's time? Um, I would I would love to be able to see us having a um, a series of which people um, they put it in their calendar as the first point of uh, first major event of the year um, to be able to come along to. Um, I think um, we can we can build a fantastic brand. We can we can provide a fantastic platform for horse racing, and I think there's an ongoing engagement um, with with this new audience and we can continuing new audience, which which is going to be. Um, hopefully very fruitful not just for us as a business but as the racing industry on a global level. Brilliant. Well, we look forward to seeing the uh, fruits of your labour. Um, Peter Phillips, thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much.